family started very well. We were five in numbers, three girls and two boys. Then my dad is a seafarer and also a business person. And um, we, were, we were at um, our place in Lima. Most times before travels, he takes me to any of his siblings' house instead of I being with his, his wife because of my health issues. So he would always want me to be taken good care of while in his absence. So along the line, we moved to, to Port Harcourt City where I am just my second or our fourth son moved in with me. But though while we were living with him, he has been traveling off and on like that because of this kind of person. So as a then, I and my brother will be left with my aunt, either going to their place, or most times we stay alone. My cousin comes, cook, provide everything at home. So at at a point, there was a day I had the strong feelings about him, but because I was still naive and though I was 10 then, so I couldn't really figure out what was going on. Not until he told, my cousin sister came and delivered a message. I don't know the content of the message. Then she left, then he woke up it was like he's traveling to our place for a funeral he left he didn't return that day we were still kind of skeptical asking questions where is our dad and stuff like that my elder sister had to go to the phone booth then they were having phone network outside to call his line but it was not going through no one came to tell us what is happening we noticed strange movements and all manner of things. Not until some weeks, months, and almost a year, they had to tell us because they felt we were still tender at, an, at that age to hear the sad news. Before they broke the news that our dad was late, that he was kidnapped, and the worst of it all was that his corpse was never found. After then, we were trying to cope. And each time I sleep, I always see my dad because of closeness I had in him. And it would be like, daughter, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. He's going to his wardrobe, packing a few of his things and leaving the house. Even when they broke the news, I never believed it, though, because... I kept seeing him in my dreams and, and all manner of things. So at a particular point, there was nothing, no one, nothing, no sound about him, no, nobody was telling us anything. They just knew that our dad is late and stuff like that. His cops, they sent divers to the oceans to, to check if they could find him, but there was no way. Then we had some aunties and uncles that came staying with us. My uncle took it upon himself to to train us where we stopped and I actually rode in my university after my secondary school. We moved into my uncle's house where we stayed and my uncle was a very strict person at that point. He was so strict that most times when we go out he gets upset and said we shouldn't leave the house. There was a day I started my menstrual flu and I ran out to get a sanitary pad. He called my line and my line wasn't, I wasn't picking because I wasn't close to it. He called my, he sent my cousin to go check if I was home. He checked I was not home. He told him to shut the gate that I shouldn't get into the house. Then he, he my uncle was not around. So I was shut out of the house for like two days i was thinking i was going to enter into the house i am my last our last born i asked him to join me to go get it while i came back i wasn't allowed to get inside i cried i called him with a different phone 
trying to explain. He never wanted to hear my explanations. The night fell. I had a friend. I thought I was having a friend as mature as he was then. I took my younger brother. I went to the house thinking he could give us a shelter. He asked us to get in and, and stuff like that. We got in. I told him I was going to be at the living room with my kid brother to sleep over. Then he asked me not to stay at the sitting room. I should come into the, the inner room with him. I got there because I was kind of afraid if he would ask us to go out at that late night. Then I got into the room and he was trying all manner of things to, you know, to get into me and the rest. And he finally took advantage of me on that fateful day. On the morning, I, I left the house with my younger brother crying. And my kid brother asked me what was wrong. I was like, there is nothing. When we left, I went to one of my family aunt's place and I explained everything to her. She was kind of a bit bitter and there was nothing she could do. She sees and she told me a word that my late dad spirit was all over weeping bitterly because whenever he sees me cry and stuff like that, it doesn't get, it gets him worried and all manner of things that I should put myself together not to cry that the dead are not always happy when they see their loved ones in a sober mood. They feel like you're suffering on earth and all manner of things. I had to put myself together at that point and I moved on. Then in my year two, I had to take a bold step of leaving my uncle's house to get my own apartment. He asked me to be in the campus, but I wasn't, I can't be comfortable in an hostel. I went to get a place of my own and I started staying. That was how I started being strong because when I lost my both parents, especially my mom, she heard the news and she fell sick. She also gave up. So after everything, he has been the one that has been my backbone. I have never been beaten by anyone in my life before. Not until his death. And Tracy, thank you very much. Your time is up. Oh.